because someone might say, okay, but it, like, is that really necessary? So in other words, you know, I'm going about my week and let's say like, I've got like my group of Christian friends and, you know, I'm talking to my, my group and I'm saying, yeah, you know, I, you know, I did this and I got upset with my, my kids and lashed out against them. And, you know, one of my Christian friends goes, it, you know, I understand you're struggling with this. Just remember Christ has forgiven you. Yeah. Right? And which is, that's what they should say, right? That's right. what, you know, that's what the prophetess should say, right? Like that's what, you know, my wife should say to someone who's struggling with that. I mean, it's true. Yeah. Cause it's true. Christ well, has forgiven. Yes. Yeah. So why, what, what's the difference? Why do you need some kind of like office of a pastor that says not just in the same way my wife has said to someone like Christ died for you. Like, you know, you lashed out at your kids. That's okay. Like Christ will forgive you. You know, Christ has forgiven you on the cross or, you know, and then you've got, why, why do we need to go to then this pastoral role in the office of the keys for him to say, not just what my wife said, but also I forgive you in this day. Right. Yeah. It's not about so much as why do we need to, as if like we have to check these boxes, you mm -hmm. know, and if you don't check them right, you're not forgiven fully. It's that, uh, we are, our consciences are troubled mm -hmm. and Satan is right there to feed all the doubt into our minds. And so we've, we're, we're bombarded with guilt and the knowledge of our sin. And so God is in the business of removing sin and removing doubt, mm. right? And this is why he gives it, gives us ministers who can pronounce these words, not as some, some obligation that you have to fulfill, like you have to go to church and hear the words from your pastor or else you're not forgiven. No, he gives us these to, so that we can, uh, to assuage the doubting conscience, right? Mm -hmm. And to give us absolute certainty of forgiveness. When um, in the hymnal, if you turn to page 292, the right of private confession. Mm. I was about to ask you about this, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the, the pastor says, do you believe that my forgiveness is God's forgiveness? Yes, I believe. Then let it be done for you as you believe, right? Mm. So in other words, we know, you know, you might tell yourself mentally, I know that Jesus died for my sins. But is your conscience convinced? Mm -hmm. You know, and the devil's right there to feed the doubt. But when you hear the man that Jesus sent specifically to tell you, I forgive you your sins, that does something for the conscience mm -hmm. that can't be quantified, you know, or put into words. And it's such a wonderful blessing. It's why I go see my father confessor, you know, once a month whether I need it or not, just like Queen uh, Victoria took a bath every six months, whether she needed it or not, right? <laughs> because I need to hear these words mm -hmm. because otherwise uh, the devil's way better at messing with my head than I am at giving him answers. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been doing his job a long time. And so I need this wonderful gift. And it's not, it's not, you must do this to be forgiven. Uh, no, if, if a Christian never goes to see his pastor for private confession. His, and, and, you know, he goes to church and he confesses his sins. I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities. And here's the general absolution. His sins are absolutely forgiven. If the Christian didn't have a chance to make it to church and uh, on the way there said, Lord, forgive me, you know, or prayed the Lord's prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. His sins are forgiven. So there's no doubt about his salvation. It's just living in this broken world with my sins right in front of my eyes like bugs on a windshield wherever I look. Mm -hmm. I need to hear these words to have this, this comfort. And some people might not have ever like even wrestled with that, but it is absolutely so apparent. I like how you said, you know, he does this for the forgiveness of sins, but also for the, the comfort and assu he assuages the doubt. Yes. And, you know, I can just say the first time I ever went to individual confession absolution was when I entered in, or when I was thinking about entering into seminary. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was, I mean, there was, there's plenty of sins that have haunted my conscience, but I remember there was one in particular. There's always for, one. Yeah, there's always <laughs> one. And that one for a good year. You know? Yeah. And when I think about it enough, it can bring back, but he, here's, here's the point, you know, it, it I had, I was a Christian, you know, I'd prayed about it, you know, I'd certainly talked with Christian friends about it. And I went and I was interviewing at the SEM, right? So I kind of took a tour and Landon Martin, God bless him, you know, love Landon Martin in many ways. Um, and he's a great guy. And 
he kind of like, we kind of like talked and I think I might've brought it up like casually. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, and then we kind of moved on and then we were kind of finishing up and like, it was just eat my conscience was just mm -hmm. yelling at me. And I was like, right. Uh, this is, you know, I want to bring this back up. This is bothering me. Or maybe I brought it up for the first time. He's like, well, let's just go do individual confession absolution. It was the first time. And the doubt went away and the yes. guilt went away. And there was right. something to where I also trusted in the authority of Lannon. I mean, right. I trust in the authority of Christ. Right. But there is, there's something about someone who's been put in that authority position that says, you know, as you said, do you trust that my forgiveness is Christ's forgiveness? Right. And the honest answer is yes, I do. I do believe right. that. Okay. Let it be done. Yes. You know, and it was, it almost felt like that burden was almost passed on to him. Right. And not that it was laid on his shoulders. It was laid on Christ's shoulders, but like, yes, that God had put Landon in that position in order to assuage that guilt because I knew I was forgiven, but the guilt had not gone away. Right. And it really did go away after that. Not yeah. that it like never like reared its head, but never in the same way. Right. And that's where I just want to urge everyone listening. If you don't do individual confession absolution, I implore you to do so. Right. And I really want to implore those that are listening that are part of my congregation. Uh, there's a handful of people that I do this for, and we don't advertise this as much as we should, but just schedule an appointment. Right. And please come to me for individual confession absolution. Because like you, and I don't do it monthly, and I should, you know, it's just I go to Josh Arndt for it, and we do it when we can, and we probably do it. We do it when we can, and uh, every time I do, it's one of the best blessings. Like, you just it walk is. away, and it's, it you is. know, for those that love, you know, the feeling, you know, some people really love, like, the feeling. Right. You get that when I go to a good service. It's just like yeah. you, you walk away and you're refreshed. The refreshment after an individual confession absolution is very potent. Like, go do individual confession absolution. Yes. The, the um, Now I get to play the devil's advocate. The, uh, the, the question that a lot of people ask is, why do I need to go to a man to get my sins forgiven? Isn't that the whole point of the Reformation? You know, cut out the middleman, we go directly to Christ, right? Mm -hmm. And it's true. You don't need to go to a man to get your sins forgiven. So why is it that so many Christians who know that are walking around burdened by a sin that was committed 40 years ago, mm -hmm. right? Is it forgiven? Yes. Does your conscience believe it? No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right? And so God has given us a remedy for the troubled conscience. And uh, I can say from personal experience, you know, I remember uh, one time years ago, I, I committed a sin and I was so ashamed of it. And, and I said to myself, I'm going to carry this to my grave, mm -hmm. you know? And the devil's like, yes, you are. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be so great. And, and he's like the credit card companies, right? You, you, you put something on the credit card company that you can't pay for. And what do they want? They want you to carry the balance. Mm. And because they know that, you know, you put $100, you know, $100 sin on the credit card and they say, yeah, we're going to collect $3,000 worth of interest over the next 50 years, right? Please don't pay this off. And so when you take that sin, it's already forgiven, but my conscience isn't convinced and I've been paying interest for, you know, for years. And I take that and I go to the means that God has given to the remedy that he's provided. I confess my sin. It's gone. And the devil knows it. Mm -hmm. And he knows that his platform that he stood on to accuse you for the last, you know, so many years is gone. The platform's gone. His legs are cut out from under him. And, you know, don't worry, you'll commit another sin and he'll be back, right? But it is, it is such a blessing. And uh, this is where the, the reformers, when they said, you know, we can't tell people you have to do this, mm -hmm. right? Like this gift is, this, this cake is so good. We're going to pry your jaws open and shove this cake down your throat and you're going to love it, right? And then everybody hates it. Nobody wants it. Mm -hmm. So they said, we have to tell people the truth. You don't have to do this. It's simply a wonderful blessing. And some people said, you know, if we don't make it an obligation, then some people won't go. Mm -hmm. True. But uh, we can't make this blessing an obligation. All we can do is what you're just doing is, is uh, urge our people, go to private confession, receive this wonderful blessing, and experience it for yourself. 